Hello fellow sim racers, and welcome to part 7 of this sim racing setup guide. In this video we're discussing ride height and the role it plays in handling. If you've not seen the first 6 parts then a link to a playlist containing all of my setup videos should be in the top right hand corner of your screen. In earlier videos, I've briefly discussed how ride height is an area that both affects and is affected by other setup changes. For a racing car, it's important to have most of the weight placed as low as possible. A car with a high centre of gravity will tend to roll during corners, and also pitch under braking and when the car accelerates. Whereas a car with a low centre of gravity will roll less when the same forces are applied. Furthermore, cars that generate lots of downforce generally need the floor to be pretty close to the ground to get the aero package working efficiently, but more on that in video 10. In an ideal world, we would run the car as low as the suspension geometry allows. However, for a number of reasons, that's not really possible. Not least of all because racetracks have bumps and curbs, so we need to make sure the car doesn't bottom out. Additionally, while cars that generate downforce using the floor do need to be close to the ground, they can also be too close to the ground and need to be kept in a pretty small setup window. So, before we move on and talk about how and why you might alter ride height settings, it's important to get the terminology right. Ride height is the distance between the ground plane and the underside of the car. And when we're talking about ride height, you'll also hear people talking about rake. Rake is the difference in ride height between the front and the rear of the car. If the rear of the car is running higher off the ground than the front, then the car has a positive rake. And if the rear is lower than the front, then the car has a negative rake though the latter is very uncommon, as in most cases this would generate aerodynamic lift, which is um, counterproductive. From a terminology perspective, depending on the sim you're using, you may find that the ride height adjustment is covered by a setting called spring perch adjustment or spring perch offset. As you can see from the diagram, the spring perches limit how far the spring can extend and therefore control the ride height of the car. Finally, in single seater cars, pushrod suspension is fairly common. So in some cars, in some sims, you may be able to alter the pushrod length to change the ride height. As I mentioned earlier in the video, when it comes to setting ride heights, the goal is generally to run the car as low as you can get away with. And truth be told, you're just as likely to be altering ride height as a reaction to changes elsewhere on the car. Changes to the spring rates, camber, toe and tyre pressures can all affect the ride height. Stiffer springs and higher tyre pressures raise the car while camber and toe changes alter the geometry of the suspension. And in addition to all of that, changes to ride height will also change your suspension geometry. So whenever you make a change to one of these values, see what impact it has on the others. Often getting every part of the suspension doing what you want requires a fair amount of going back and forth between settings, making small adjustments. So with all of those variables in mind, how do you go about finding the best ride height for your setup? Well, this is one of those things that needs a trial and error approach. When it comes to cars that don't rely on aero, a good approach to take is to gently lower the car a little at a time until you start to feel the car bottoming out over bumps. At that point you can dial back the adjustment a little until you're happy. But don't worry too much if you get the occasional bit of bottoming out, if it's quick and drivable then it's all good. So far, so easy, but when it comes to cars that generate downforce using the floor, things are a little more complicated. We're going to talk about aero in much more detail in video 10, but there are a couple of basics that you need to know when adjusting ride height. Modern racing cars that generate lots of downforce are incredibly sensitive to both ride height and pitch. To keep the underfloor aerodynamics working properly, the ride height of the car needs to be very stable. This is why modern aero cars look like they're incredibly stiff. The suspension needs to resist all of the extra forces applied by the aerodynamics and maintain the ride height in a very small operating window. And it's the last part that's critical here. So we can take the same approach as with a non-aero car and gradually reduce the ride height until we start to hit issues. However, in addition to the car hitting the floor, you also need to pay attention to whether the ride height is becoming so low that it stalls the underbody aero. If this happens, you'll quickly lose performance in high-speed corners. And in my experience, it's usually fairly dramatic. Though again, this is something that varies a bit from sim to sim. If you're lucky, the sim you're using will be able to give you some data about what's happening with the car. For example, the Wings app in Assetto Corsa. This gives you a helpful live readout of the lift, drag and ground height of the various aero generating elements of the car, amongst other things. So it's very easy to see if the car starts to generate less downforce. In my opinion, it's still advisable to adjust the ride height incrementally, but it's nice to be able to rely on data as well as how the car feels. 
Thus far, I've not really talked about changing the rake. If you recall, that's the difference in ride height between the front and the rear of the car. This has a huge impact on the efficiency of the aero package, and if you keep the ride height and the rake settings within a certain operating window, the car produces the maximum available amount of downforce and the least drag for that particular aero setup. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about this in detail in video 10, as this has much more to do with aerodynamics than it does ride height. For now, it's enough to know that most cars run a positive rake, meaning that the rear of the car is higher off the ground than the front. So, to sum things up, racing cars prefer to be as close to the ground as possible. This helps minimise weight transfer, and in particular roll during corners. Additionally, cars that generate lots of downforce also need to be run very close to the ground. However, this type of car is particularly sensitive and needs to be kept within a very small operating window. Too high and you won't generate much downforce, too low and you'll stall the underbody aero. So that wraps things up for this video on ride height. In the next video, we're going to be talking about brake bias, how it impacts the handling, and how you can use it to alter the feel of the car in racing conditions. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others, then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.